okay now we are going to discuss another protocol used for authentication that is called protocol ap 3.0 it is the better version than protocol ap 2.0 so to solve this problem to solve this problem so we have another protocol which is called protocol at ap means authentication protocol 3.0 in this protocol the ls sends password her password along with the message i am ls and along with her ip address so this password is only known to bob this is known to bob and from this password and this ip address and this message then the bob can understand okay this message is from the ls this message is from the ls that i am ls so but when this message is exchanged this ls password is exchanged in plain text it is visible so when this message is passing from ls to bob so this message goes through internet and internet is a shared network so anyone can access it so suppose bob is listening to this message so bob notes the ls password as well as ls ip address okay so this protocol can also fail and how it fails let's see it suppose when this message was exchanging between the ls and bob so the ls noted the ls uh, password the the 2d noted the ls passwords and the ls ip address so after this exchange the 2d sends this message ls ip address ls password and i am ls so now the 2d is sending the message to bob using the ls password and ls ip address so the bob will assume that this message is coming from the ls but it is not coming from ls but it is coming from the 2d who is the attacker so this is called because this password is also in the plain text this password is also in the plain text so uh, this example is that like if you are accessing the gmail server and the, the ip the password from you and to gmail server is sent in the plain text so when the message is passing through anyone so anyone can understand this message okay <coughs> okay so so in this way the 2d the sends the messages uh, to bob assuming the putting the ls ip address and ls password so the bob is assuming that these messages are coming from ls but this message is coming from the 2d okay so in this way it is also there is failure of this protocol ap 3.0 so that's why when when you log in to gmail yahoo or any web server so your password it should not be sent in the plain text because anyone can access that system if your message is intercepted by someone in the internet okay so now what is done so how to solve this problem how to solve this problem that the, so this protocol problem can be solved if the ls password is sent encrypted so if someone see it then it cannot understand so okay so in the protocol ap 3.1 the ls sends the message i am ls anyone in any, any message it ls puts the ip address her ip address and also put the password in encrypted form so so from the encrypted password from uh, okay the, when the bob receives the bob will decrypt this this password and then it can understand that this message is from the ls okay so if the 2d see this message so 2d can get the ls ip address okay but 2d cannot get the encrypted password because this password is encrypted so the 2d cannot understand this password okay however so this is okay protocol but this protocol is because this password is encrypted so only the ls and bob knows the key for decrypting this password so the 2d cannot understand this message okay this is good however this protocol can also fail how it can fail let's see it this protocol can fail that for example when the ls was talking to bob so the 2d attacker in the middle or man in the middle or woman in the middle she intercepted the message she stored one copy of the message with herself okay and when this 
communication is done after this the trudy sends this they copied message again to the bob and this message it contains the encrypted password so when the bob decrypt the password so bob can understand okay this message is from the ls because this password encrypted password is only known to uh, ls and bob not to someone else so this is called playback attack and but there is the same message mls it is sent by the today so you can see that this message is not a new message this message is a previous message that was copied by trudy that was exchanged by to ls and bob so bob cannot understand that this is not the new message this is a message that was generated by L, uh, by ls previously and it has been exchanged between ls and bob okay so in the in the, in the previous protocol this trudy can generate new message for number i am ls i am uh, i am flana flana hi and how are you good etc so it can generate the new messages and the new passwords okay but here the trudy cannot generate the new messages because only this password is known to okay so if the encrypted password is sent so this is called playback attack so okay so in this case that this encrypted password is stored by the trudy and it sends in the message this encrypted password okay so there is this is called playback attack so uh, this uh, this protocol ap3.1 also not doesn't work so to solve this problem we have another protocol this is called authentication protocol ap4.0 and this protocol how it works let's see it first of all in this protocol we use number r this is called one this is called nonce and it is used once in a lifetime and this number is random and this number is used to avoid playback attack how it is avoided let's see it for example when the ls sends the message to bob so ls will also include the r okay so let's see it through example so the message so the L ls the ap protocol 4.0 it how it works the ls sends message i am ls okay bob sends a random number r this number used once in a lifetime okay then the bob sends this r in the encrypted form and this r is encrypted by using a symmetric key a shared key that is only known to a and b only to ls and bob okay so after this you know this protocol works however this protocol is good because r is sent and this is used for one time authentication so if the next time they want to authenticate again this r should be used okay so if here if here the ls is talking so r will generate first so when the ls and bob they have finished talking and after this the trudy do wants to talk so this bob will sends r since it doesn't know the password it doesn't know the key because the key is on only known to ls the key is not so if it she sends again so she cannot encrypt the r she cannot encrypt r because the trudy doesn't have doesn't have the key this key because this key is used so if this key is used to encrypt the r so it can avoid the uh, this protocol a 4.0 it avoids the problem and the protocol ap3.1 because when the trudy wants to send the message so the trudy has first to get r from bob and when it gets bob, uh, r so then it has to encrypt it with using ab key key ab but the trudy doesn't have key ab because this is only known to ls and bob okay so this protocol works fine however this protocol also have failure this has also can fail and how it fails let's see it so another protocol that is used because in this protocol 
it can fail what is how it can fail because this key ab it should be securely exchanged between ls and bar and that is difficult because we have discussed it in the disadvantage of this algorithm symmetric key encryption algorithm exchanging of this secret key is difficult between ls and pop okay so another protocol that is proposed it is called protocol ap 5.0 and in this protocol how it works ls sends the message i am ls bob sends the nonce r and it is once then ls encrypt this pass this r with the her private key with her private key why because her private key is, is, is only known to ls not to someone else so this is and her public key is known to each and everyone including bob so when this message is coming to the ls so the ls uh, from ls then the bob can decrypt this message by using the ls private uh, public key and the ls public key is known to each and everyone including the bob the ls can uh, can announce its public key openly to each and everyone so when the bob receives the public key so it can decrypt this message so this since the bob is sure that this message is decrypted by using the public key of ls not the public key of someone else so the and the private key of ls is only known to ls if it is known to someone else then the, it is the responsibility of ls okay then we can fix the responsibility on ls okay so this protocol works fine that it avoids the secret key exchange okay because this public key is can be exchanged openly there is no need for secret key exchange okay however this protocol can also fail this security protocol can also fail how it can fail for example when ls is talking to bob so there is a man or woman in the middle like trudy when when the ls message comes to trudy so c send this message to bob when the bob sends the r is r is sent to ls when the ls sends her encrypted this message with her private key so the ls request for the public key of ls so ls uh, the trudy request for the public key of ls so the ls can announce her public key to each and everyone including trudy including bob okay so when the trudy receives this uh, public key of ls so trudy can decrypt this message and when it decrypts this message then it can sense this message r when after decrypting this r then the trudy sends this r message by encrypting with her own private key and when the bob request for the public key so of ls so the trudy sends her own public key rather than the public key of ls so because and this message can be decrypted by using the trudy public key okay so in this way all the communication that is done between ls and bob it is passing through the trudy and trudy can and can decrypt the message can see the message m and the ls and bob they are unknown they are not they are not aware of this situation that there is a man or woman in the middle okay so this is a security hole and it is very difficult to detect okay now we are going to discuss the message integrity so we can achieve the authentication we have discussed lastly authentication protocols now we want to discuss message integrity the digital signature is used for you know that the message integrity it involves two things one is authentication and one is called uh, that the message is not altered not changed not modified there is no insertion there is no addition to the message no deletion from the messages no modification in the messages and even the message order is not changed this is called message integrity one thing and the second aspect is authentication that this message is coming from the one from whom you assumes okay so <laughs> digital signature is used to solve the message integrity problem both authentication and encryption and uh, message integrity so cryptographic technique 
analogous to handwritten signature okay for example when this when when you send a message and you sign it so the bank can understand your check that this this check is signed by you how they can do it because there is as your signature is stored when you sign it so the a check they check sign is used compared with the stored sign in your bank account so if they are matching then it means that this, this message is from you so when the sender bob digitally signs the document so it establishing that he is the document owner he is the creator so this is digital signature it is verifiable like your handwritten signature is verifiable here since the digital signature is also verifiable and it is non forgeable so the recipient ls can prove someone that bob and no one else including ls have been must have signed this document so if if you uh, when you sign a check and you send it to a bank and the that check their sign is matching with your sign is which is stored in the banks and if later on you uh, you say that i uh, that this message is not this check is not signed by you then they can take you to court because this signature is matching with the one which is stored in the banks okay so the digital signature works in the same way okay and how it works so let's discuss it when the bob sends the message this is the message this message is encrypted using the private key of bob and the private key of bob is only known to bob not someone else and this message is sent when you know this message is sent so this message can only be decrypted by using the public key of pop and public key of pop is with each and every one if someone if later on this uh, bob said that this message is not from bob so one can take it to court because this message is encrypted using your private key and your private key is generated by you if someone else has come to know about your private key then this is the bob responsibility this is the bob responsibility okay so the private so the public key algorithm provides strong authentication it provides strong authentication because it cannot denounce uh, the bob cannot uh, uh, say that this message is not from the uh, bob okay so digital signature suppose the ls receives message in with the private key of uh, signed with the private key of bob so ls verify m by uh, applying bob public key so if the message is decrypted using the bob public key so it means that the message is from the L, uh, bob if the if the message is in, uh, decrypted using the public key of bob then it means that it is from the uh, bob not from someone else so if the message that is encrypted by using the public key or uh, private key of bob it is decrypted by using the public key of bob m so the m message can be recovered so it means that whoever sign must have the bob's private key and since the bob private key is only with the bob because bob generates this private key so no one else can come to know if someone else comes to know about the bob private key then this is the responsibility of bob okay so ls ver verifies that the bob signed m because it is decrypted by using the public key of bob no one else signed in message m because the but the private key of bob is only known to bob and bob signed m and not m dash bob have signed m not someone else message okay non repudiation ls can take m and signature this to court and prove that the bob has signed it if the bob private key is known to someone else then it is the responsibility of bob it is the responsibility of bob okay so another thing this is called strong authentication so the digital signature it provides strong authentication okay this digital signature it provides strong authentication it solve all the problems all the problem that we have discussed this protocol this problem is also addressed by using the digital signature okay now another part of uh, is uh, is that uh, uh, because the public key algorithm it is computationally expensive extensive it takes a lot of time because it use modular arithmetic 
so one a way of encrypting the whole message with the public key instead of encrypting instead of encrypting the whole message with the public key it will take longer time and then again decrypting the whole message with the with the public key of bob it will take longer time okay so what should we do we should reduce this time how should we reduce this time that we a large message m we generate a hash function a hash code a small code for example 3 bits 4 bits 7 bits for example this message is 10 mb and we generate one uh, uh, one kilobyte uh, hash function so instead of encrypting this whole message we only encrypt the hash of the message so the hash of the message is very small portion for example this large message is 10 mb and this hash message, uh, hash message is 1 kb so encrypting the 10 mb message and encrypting the the 1 kb message so the encrypting 1 kb message will take less time as compared to encrypting a 10 mb message encrypting two message. so the hash function it is a many to one mapping it is a one many to one mapping for example you have a large message so it will generate a unique hash code okay so it produces a fixed size message for example you have 10 mb message 1 mb message 13 mb message 10 gb message for all these type of message it will generate 1 kb message 1 kb message so given a message digest x computation infeasible to find such a, and this hash function is computed in such a way that if you know this large message so you can generate hash function m but if you know the hash function from this hash function you cannot generate this message an encryption in message can be encrypted and message can be decrypted but this hash code cannot be decrypted this cannot be decrypted so this is one way because from the hash message you cannot from this hash code you cannot generate this message but from the message you can generate the hash so this is one way okay so basically it is like internet checksum for example you have a message this and you generate this hash code okay so later on if uh, when, when when the message when the hash code is received so again the hash code is regenerated and if there is something missing for example 91 missing then the hash code will be di different okay so this hashing provides that this message is not altered because this hash code is generated for this message if there in this message if any one bit is changed this hash code will be changed this hash code, hash code will be changed okay so this is the property of the hash algorithm okay so if when the message is transmitted so we also send the hash code and when the receiver receives the message it regenerate the hash code for the message if the hash code reach generated from the message and the hash code that is sent by the sender if they are matching then it means that the message is not altered the message is received as it was sent by the sender and if they don't match then it means that the message is altered the message has been modified on its way okay so by combining the hash function so how digital signature works for example we have a large message m we generate hash code function m and this hash message is digitally signed this hash message it is encrypted by using the private key of bob not the whole message and this encrypted hash function hash message it is attached with the message both the message m and this encrypted hash message is sent to the receiver sent to the receiver okay so when receiver receives the message for example ls receives the message okay so ls separates the message and hash function ls encrypted message m is hash function is, is separated from the message okay and the ls again generates the hash function this hash algorithm is known to 
Bob and address sender and receiver. Okay, so the ls generate the hash function and it again hash function m. When ls receives the encrypted hash function, so it is hash encrypted hash message is decrypted by using the public key of Bob because the public key of Bob is only known to Bob, not to someone else. Okay, so it is decrypted. This message is encrypted by the public key of Bob. Uh, sorry, private key of Bob. So this message can be decrypted by using the public key of Bob. And the public key of Bob is known to anyone, including the LS. So the LS decrypt this message HM and then it compares HM. This HM hash message it is sent by the Bob by the sender. And this hash message it is generated by the LS by the receiver. And if they both match, then it means that this message is not changed on its way from sender to receiver. Because if it was changed, then this hash message will be different. This hash message will be different. So this protocol, digital signature, it provides two things. Authentication. Because this message is, uh, is from the bow. Because this message is decrypted by using the public key of bow. And public key of Bob it is decrypted it means that this is encrypted by private key of Bob and the private key of Bob it is only known to Bob not to someone else so it means that this message is coming from the Bob so it provides strong authentication and since when this encrypted hash message is decrypted and this hash message is matching with the hash message, message that is generated for the receiving message it, it means that this message is not changed because this is the code the hash message this hash message it is generated by the sender when the sender generates the message and this is generated by after receiving the message so if they are same that means that sender message and receiving message are same so it means that the, the message is not modified on its way. There is no addition, there is no deletion, and there is even no re the message. Okay, so this digital message, it provides message integrity. Message integrity means that the authentication, that this message is coming from the Bob, because it is dec decrypted by the Bob public key, it means that it is encrypted by Bob private key. And the Bob private key is only known to Bob. And second, that this message, the, it, the receiver generates, the LS generates the hash function of, of the receiving message. And this, the receiving message, hash, hash message, hash code, hash uh, message, it is equal to the hash message of the sender. Then it means that this message is not changed. If they are not matching, then means that this message is being modified. Either there is some addition, there is deletion uh, from the message, or there is re -artering. Okay, so this provides message integrity. Okay, so we have discussed the message integrity. So there are different hash function algorithm available, and you can see it, which is called MD4, MD5, SHA1. Okay, 16, and uh, so. So in this security hole, it is addressed by the uh, security hole. It is addressed by this algorithm. Okay. So we have discussed digital signature. By this, we have in the network security course. Okay. And by uh, okay. So the network security course is end. Okay. So the message integrity is done.